Hello. Today I'm going to talk about a very small uh, graveyard in uh, near Klamath Falls, Oregon. It's actually uh, the site of the old Fort Klamath. Um, there are only four graves there in the graveyard. This is what it looked like in the 1940s. Um, this grave site is a very unique grave site in that it is directly tied to the Modoc War. Uh, the Modoc War was from July 6th, 1872 to June 4th, 1873. Uh, the four individuals buried here uh, are Captain Jack, Shanshan John, Boston Charlie, and Black Jim. They're Modoc Indians. Um, and they're here because they were executed on October 3rd, 1873. The Modoc War is an interesting war because it's a point, a turning point for President Grant, who was trying to initiate a um, a peace process with the Native Americans throughout the country. He believed that they were not treated fairly, and that they should be treated fairly. And if they were, it would reduce all of the uh, contentions between the whites and the Native Americans. Um, his peace process, uh, unfortunately, as he was trying to implement it, happened right at the same time the Modoc War was going on. And so as the Modoc War accelerated, it was actually one of the most um, media-saturated events up to that time, especially as far as Indian Wars. Uh, there was more media press about the Modoc War. There were reporters all over uh, Oregon, uh, Southern Oregon and Northern California, what is now Klamath County and Modoc counties, uh, Klamath being in Oregon and Modoc being in uh, California. Um, it spanned a fairly wide area, actually about four counties, uh, Siskiyou and Modoc counties in California and Klamath County and uh, actually three counties in, in Oregon, Jackson County and over into Lake County. Um, the graveyard itself, uh, the way it looks now is like this. It, it's on a very small piece of land that is a uh, county park. It is a national monument um, to the Modoc War, but it's a much smaller space than what, the Fort, what Fort Klamath used to be. There are a couple of reconstructed buildings on the site. These graves, however, in the, are in the same place that they were at the time in 1873. One of the things that makes this particular um, particular grave site so interesting is how things came about. Um, President Grant established a peace commission in March of 1873 to try and stop the Modoc War. Um, it was essentially a land issue. Uh, the Modoc had been moved to a Klamath reservation. Um, they wanted to move back to their own lands. They had issues with the Klamath natives, um, the Klamath tribe, and there were several uh, wealthy white landowners who were holding onto the property, or onto their traditional lands, and so they wanted to move back to their lands. The peace process and the peace commission wasn't working well for them. Um, Captain Jack felt that they could ultimately get their land back, but it would require uh, a peaceful solution and some give and take. The rest of the tribe, or significant members of the tribe, were not willing to go that route, and they felt the only way to move forward and get their land back was to show the leaders of the white people who they perceived was a very small group. Um, to convince them that to give them the land back, they needed to show a force, which means they needed to kill the, the heads of the white tribe, which in this case was a very small group. Um, it was actually the peace commissioners, uh, General Canby, uh, Alfred Meacham, uh, Reverend Thomas and L.S. Dyer, and the translators, Toby and Frank Riddle. 
Uh, Toby is a Modoc woman and her descendants still live here in the area, um, as do some of Captain Jack's descendants. So what happened was on April 11th, 1873, we have uh, Captain Jack, uh, Sean Shin John, Boston Charlie, Black Jim, um, also Bogus Charlie, and Hooker Jim, and two other MODOK, um, Broncho and Slow Luck. I don't have pictures for them. They were in the peace tent with uh, the General Canby, Meacham, Thomas, Dyer, and the Riddles, and Captain Jack went ahead, stepped away from the table as they, they were having a discussion and it was going the way all of the discussions had gone there poorly. So they stepped back and he gave the signal and uh, Broncho and Slowlock came in with rifles. The others were already armed. They had their weapons concealed and they proceeded to fire. Uh, General Canby was killed instantly. Um, Meacham, who was a former Indian um, Affairs official, was also killed. Uh, actually, he, excuse me, he was injured. He was actually saved by Toby Riddle. Uh, Reverend Thomas was killed. Uh, Dyer managed to escape along with Frank Riddle. So the Peace Commissioners were killed. Obviously, this puts an end to the Peace Commission. And it seriously hampers um, Grant's efforts on making a change with the Indian Affairs um, organization spread throughout the country. There was a lot of corruption there. He was trying to get rid of it. This changed the attitudes of the people. Up until this point, most people in Northern California and Southern Oregon were actually very much in favor of and support of the MODOK. They felt they were being treated poorly. This, however, of course, changed things. And with the massive amount of media attention, this put out a big uh, reverberation throughout the country, which is why the Modoc War is so important. Uh, the next biggest event is going to be the Battle of Little Bighorn, and, which is going to completely change uh, policy from that point forward. And the Modoc War was what instituted that. One of the interesting things about the graveyard is um, Broncho and Slowluck were young and they, they were tried with Captain Jack, Sean Chin John, Boston Charlie, and Black Jim. Um, the six of them were tried. They were convicted. Um, it was a military trial. The California the representatives in California, representative in Oregon, wanted this to be a civil trial, civilian trial, uh, but it was ordered by Grant that it would be a military trial. He appointed uh, the leader of the trial board who was uh, a friend of General Canby and he was told to go ahead and, and bring in the other members, other officers for the trial and all of them either served under General Canby or served during the Modoc War. Uh, the trial took a total of four days, uh, actually four and a half days. Um, and of course, they were all found guilty. Uh, a little while long, a little while later, the um, adjutant at the fort um, persuaded them to consider taking uh, Bronco and Slowluck and not executing them. And it was agreed by the president uh, on September 10th. 1873 that they would their sentences would be commuted and they went to Alcatraz uh, where um, Broncho died and Slowluck eventually did leave he did not serve a life sentence he went to Oklahoma with the rest of the Modoc um, but on October 3rd 1873 Captain Jack Sean Chin John Boston Charlie and Black Jim were all hung and they ended up in the cemetery here. Their bodies were prepared um, somewhat in secrecy. The, the hanging was at full pomp and circumstance. Um, the rest of the Modoc were held in the um, held 
in the stockade and were in full view of the hanging. They were also in full view of the um, the grave sites. There was a period of time it took a little long for them for them to prepare the bodies, but they put them in the grave site. What was interesting was their bodies were not entirely put in their graves. Their heads were actually removed, and their heads ended up um, at the Smithsonian. And it uh, took quite some time until 1990 uh, when legislation was passed in the, that would allow for the repatriation of the bodies. The local tribes petitioned for repatriation. They were granted um, and told they could send a representative to pick up the heads and return them to Klamath Falls where they, or to Klamath tribes where they would be able to repatriate them with the body. The story gets a little bit weirder when the person that they sent as a representative actually dies on the way to the Smithsonian to pick up the heads. So the heads were not picked up by the tribes and they were not able to come to an agreement on who would be the one to go pick them up. So a descendant of Captain Jack actually went and picked up the heads on their own and brought them back. However, Again, to add to the interesting part of this, uh, they refuse to give them to the tribes. They actually have taken care of them themselves, said the heads are fine, they're not being disrespected, but they're being taken care of. And so to this day, those heads are still not repatriated to the four natives that are buried here. Um, and the story continues on until such time as they're repatriated. Uh, it's a very interesting story. The Modoc War is a very interesting war, and it had huge impact on um, Indian policy for the United States. So if you get a chance to look, I've uh, put some of the reference materials in the, uh, in the uh, text section below. Please feel free to take a look. Have a great day.